what's going on guys just want to get you some uh, tips and tricks here to getting started with NBA 2k20 on my team I'm hoping right now that uh, if you're new to the channel just go ahead and subscribe just go ahead and hit that like button for me and uh, you know we'll just carry on with it now so here's here's the deal. I get a lot of questions sometimes of hey I'm just starting out or hey want to get this no money spent maybe or, or just you know just trying to get in here and do do something fun and, and not spend money or or just you know just starting out so we're gonna review some cards that could be could be really good for you know just starting out um, also cards that are just budget sleepers so one in particular that I really like um, he's a great card regardless of which version you get and that's going to be Smoosh Parker and um, where is Smoosh Parker I thought he was a point guard here bear with me bear with me he should be in here unless my eyes have glazed over him a little bit you know we're gonna do the season way we're gonna look him up by name I probably just eyes are glazing over him because I'm a little tired but there we go Smoosh Parker so there we go he actually starts off as a ruby his uh, evil requirements are actually pretty pretty light. He's got Treyberg base, uh, same as uh, McGrady. He's 6'4", so you got a little bit of size to him. He's uh, got 93 ball, 90 driving dunk, 87 uh, mid. You know, every, everything's pretty high up there. Ball handles at 89, so you can speed boost. 90 perimeter defense, 70 interior defense. He actually got both. He might be able to handle some switches. 94 all cross board for speed. Uh, strength is decent, stamina is good, lateral quickness is good. Um, his tendencies, I can't remember. Let's take a look here. They're good. 90 and 90 for on ball and pass interception, 75 75 for contest and block. Excellent card. Just an excellent, excellent card. He's uh, got Hall of Fame catch and shoot. Everything else is going to be on gold. But he's got all the badge you need on gold pickpocket, pick dodger, chase down, clamps, heart crusher, interceptor, timid air, lightning, off ball, pogo, tireless. Trapper, consistent finisher. He just does it all. He can shoot, he can score, he can defend. He's got showtime dunks, uh, downhill, handles for days, quick first step. Just really great card. Unpluckable. Really, really big. 50 gold badges. 50 gold badges out of an amethyst after you Evo him. And and if you're not going to Evo him and you start off with the, the ruby, um, he, he's not going to be so bad as a ruby either. There's not much that uh, changes. Uh, next up, I would say, everybody talks about him, but it's just the truth. It's Rudy Fernandez. He's just an excellent, excellent uh, two-guard. He's cheap. Uh, he's a diamond. Um, he, he can get it all for you as well. Uh, this is another car that could get you started. You could be very competitive with him. Um, he's got a great di driving dunk in 97. I rim run with him like crazy. His, his release isn't too bad either. He could play a little bit of defense. I'd say defense. Defensively, he performs better than his stats suggest. But he's eh, it, he's, he's just okay at defense. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, another guard that you could look at is going to be uh, Ronald Murray. If you like that trade brick base. Um, he's really hard to, to pass up. He's another one that could do it all. Um, he could play point guard too. He's 6'4". And I like running him at the 2 personally. But he could dunk, he can shoot, he could defend a little. Uh, defense probably his weakest point. It's the way it is a lot of these cards. Either a lot of offense or a lot of defense. Um, this card here in particular has a lot of offense, a little bit of defense. He's not bad. He's got Hall of Fame catch and shoot, contact, quick first step. Really hard to argue with this card and putting him on a budget squad. Um, let's talk about some bigs. So a big that's just hard to deny is going to be glitched Dino Raja. Um, Dino is got a huge wingspan. Um, I can't remember if it's eight foot or something like that. It's, it's just a huge wingspan. So he's going to be able to get it done. This is a glitch card. Um, used to be kind of expensive, um, even though he's an amethyst, but they released it, um, in packs. It was a locker code, I think, um, after the 250k tournament. And he came out, uh, to be a lot cheaper than what he is. Great three ball, great mid range. He could just shoot. I love it. I, I like doing a five out with him. Do a little pick and roll. Have him pick and fade, pick and pop. And he just does an outstanding job. He could dunk a little. He's not the greatest at dunking. Um, his inside game is going to be decent because of his height and his length. He's six foot eleven. Okay, so he's not a seven footer, but with that length, you're not going to notice. Okay, speed. You know, eighty four is okay. 
Um, eight, 77 lateral quickness is, is okay. It's it's not going to be anything fantastic compared to the top five bigs, but I'd say he's he's still a top 10 big. You know, maybe maybe he's fallen out of the top 10 for some people, but he's a top 10 big. He's got corner specialist on Hall of Fame. That's just fantastic. Uh, any of your bigs that can shoot from the corners like that. Catch a shoot, acrobat, difficult shots, less finisher. He, he's got brake starter. That's a great badge. Rim protector, pick dodger, chase down, box, heart crusher, intimidator, lightning reflexes, moving trunk, rebound chaser, uh, post move lockdown, tireless worm. He's got all of the big badges you need for your big. This goal downhill is nice. That way, if you have him in transition, he can move. He can move a little bit. You know, quick first step, unpluckable, unpluckable. Use him like a point center. A clutch shooter, flexible release, green machine, hot zone hunter. Those are all the, the nice shooting badges. Uh, he just needs range. This one has range. Um, does he have range stock? Let me take a look and see if his range is stock, or did I add that to him? Um, I did not add that to him, so he he's, he's stock uh, with range. It's hard to argue with this card. He's fantastic. Maybe add some clamps, uh, interceptor. You know, there might be some badges you want to add to him, but you could you could have him on your top squad. Uh, next up, let me think of some other great uh, budget cards here that could really, really get you by. I everybody's got a different opinion on these. Uh, for me, um, there we go. Seku uh, Dumboya, I, I believe is how you pronounce his name. He's fast. He's fast. Got a nice shot. He does it all. He really surprised me. I had to use him in limited one, one weekend, and he just really surprised me. He can shoot. He can dunk. He can run. I love using him at the four. He's got a 93 speed at the four. That is just fantastic. And he's an amethyst, and he's cheap. He's six foot nine, so he's got okay size. Um, he's going to be able to rebound a little bit. Um, he's got all the badges you need. Hall of Fame quick first step. So he's just really fast. He's got a lob city finisher, pickpocket, pick dodger, chase down, clamps, heart crusher, interceptor, intimidator, lightning, moving truck, off ball, pogo, tireless defender, trapper. He's going to hold his own in the post. Um, that moving truck and the post move lockdown, he's going to really hold his own in the post. It's fantastic. Then if someone does get by him, he's got that chase down. He can really get after things. Um, offensively, he's got showtime dunks. He's got the downhill, tight handles, unpluckable. He's got hustle hunter. He's got range. He's really got everything you need. Fantastic card. Uh, next up, who else would I put to round out this lineup? That's pretty easy to get. Jonathan Isaac is always a smart move as a ruby. Uh, can't go wrong there. Um, some of the other free cards you can maybe go after. We'll get into grinding some free cards here in a minute. Um, I'm a big fan of Xavier McDaniel. It's another card that you also look at. He's a little bit dated, but uh, he's, he's very tough. He's very tough. Um, another card, who else would I be inclined to throw into my lineup at the three? You know, Glenn Robinson III isn't a bad option. There's probably some other cards a little better. But it just kind of gives you an idea of who else is out there that you can maybe think about throwing in there at the three. Um, Donovan Mitchell is dated. He's got a new card. That's, we'll get into that, too. That's another card that you need to pursue would be his Opal. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, the cards that I go for tend to be higher end, so bear with me. I'm just trying to think of what else to do. I didn't really have this planned out. As far as exactly who to get Kobe. There we go. I don't know if I'd run him at the three, but I definitely have him in my lineup. Kobe can't go wrong there. Um, I definitely, definitely would have Kobe around as far as Ronald Murray. Maybe run him at the one, maybe run him at the two. Um, another point guard that could be a budget point guard that you wouldn't think of and think of him as being cheap is Russell Westbrook. He's a fantastic rim runner. If you missed out on his Opal, um, this is really close to his Opal. I would not hesitate to pick him up. Um, if we compare him to his Opal over here, um, it's it's really close. I was kind of perusing things. And I've got a shoe on here, so some of these stats are actually not too bad. They're only like off by three. His driving dunk is a lot better on his Opal, but still, he can really, really get into the lane and handle contact. His defense is also fantastic. He just sticks to people. I don't know what to say. He he stays in front of him. He sticks to him. He may not get a lot of steals, but he just will stick to people, and he will contest. If we look at his tendencies, it looks like the tendencies are identical. Um, he contests the shots just constantly. His uh, pass interception on ball tendencies you know, are good. They're not great, but they're good. Um, his badges, his badges are fantastic. 
Acrobat, Relessive Finisher. He's got Hall of Fame Dimer, Hall of Fame Clamps, Hall of Fame Tyler's Defender, Assist Finisher, Contact Finisher, Fancy Footwork, Fast Break, Giant Slayer, just downhill, quick first step. He's going to be extremely, extremely fast. Um, I would definitely run him probably as my, my second. That's where I'd probably put him. And Raul Murray would probably be my auxiliary in some capacity. Um, next up, um, and I can't believe I forgot about him, just came out. This card was worth a fortune prior. I locked him in as an Opal, and I really regret it now. Uh, Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson is going to be fantastic at the three. They list him at 6'6 six, six now because they did that change on the heights in the NBA because it's the current card. But he does it all. 97 three point shot. He's a perfect cone. He could dunk a little. If you put a uh, speed shoe on him, he really can move. I'm not going to say he can run your own offense through him, but he can really move. And his defense is just fantastic. Look at that 90 90 for on ball pass inter interception. He's got 85 contest, 85 block shot. Really is a quality, quality. Uh, card. He's got Hall of Fame clamps, catch suit, corner, heart crusher, intimidator, lightning, tireless, dead eye, flexible release, hot start, range, slippery off ball, slippery off ball. It's a huge badge. Tireless shooter, volume shooter. It, it's hard to argue with this card. He holds up quite well. If you compare it to his Opal, uh, let's see where his Opal is at here. Uh, right here. It's it's very close. It's very close. It, it makes me very sad that I spent all that MT. Anyways, uh, Enough of my own crying and my own pity and, and self-wallowing here. Um, but yeah, it's it's really close. Obviously, the Opal's better, uh, especially on the speed side. But really, you're not going to use Clay. Like, I, I try to use Clay. Um, if I have Clay out there, I'll have him try to do everything. And and he's he's good, but he, he's not going to be that everything kind of baller. Anyways, moving on... Um, who else would we have in here that's going to be a must-have for our budget ballers? I like Deke a lot if you need a center that can defend. A lot of people sleep on that card. He is quite good. Um, other cards that you'd want to consider would be this Jarrett Jack, who also has a nice Evo. He's also someone to consider. I would also consider, out of the Ruby tier, that's going to be extremely cheap, uh, Kevin Porter Jr., Fantastic card as well. I would have him slotted at a two or a three position. In a lot of ways, I think I like him better than even Kobe. He is fantastic. Um, he's a type of card that will score at will. If you're, you if he's in the right hands, it's GG's. Right here, 92 three ball, 90 mid-range, 90 close shot, 90 driving layup. Um, he's not a post-move guy or anything, but he will get to the basket. He can defend a little bit. He can rebound a little bit. He's got great speed, great handles, great lateral quickness. Fantastic card. On a budget, he's a must-have. Uh, can't stress it enough. He's got all the right badges on gold, which is, you know, that's, that's not a problem. It's a ruby, you know. That's that's really, it's cheap. Um, next up, who are some other badges? We'll look in this amethyst tier and this diamond tier. Try to find us some more uh, good value cards. This Baron Davis is practically the same as his Opal. Uh, no interior defense, so to speak, of, but everything else is on point. Um, if you're just a fan of Baron Davis, go ahead and run him. He's a great budget card. Another one is Chris Paul. I don't do well with this card. I should be better with him, but I just don't do well with this card. But I've seen people just straight up cook with him. He is fantastic. Colin Sexton is a free card. He feels as good as his moments pink diamond card that I have. It's just a fantastic card as well. We are flush with a lot of great guards right now in this budget tier. Um, extremely fast as well with 95 all around, 92 lateral quickness. It's a great card. He can curry slide. Um, he's going to move very well. He's got unpluckable in Hall of Fame and quick first step in Hall of Fame. Everything else is there. He's got the Showtime Dunks. Fantastic card. Uh, moving along, another card that I would potentially consider. I wouldn't consider Levine. I just wouldn't consider Levine. I'm going to put Sexton in the lineup just that way I have everything met. We're going to look at bigs. Let's look at some more bigs and or power forwards here. Um, in the Ruby tier, is there anyone else I would consider in this Ruby tier? Kyle Anderson. Kyle Anderson is also an Evo. He's a great card. He can get things done in a hurry. 
Uh, offensively, he's really great. Defensively, he is quite good as well. In fact, his stats show that he's better defensively than offensively. I really cook with this guy offensively. Defensively, I guess I don't notice him because he's always holding this guy down. You know, he always holds it down. I use him a lot in limited play, but if you really needed somebody to fill a spot off your bench and like play some defense, get you some quality minutes, this guy can do it. Got all the badges you need, rebound, chaser, handles for days, downhill, quick first step, unpluckable, hot zone, slippery off ball, hot start, tie handles, stop and go. It's just really a fantastic card. Uh, getting back over here, we're going to look at some more uh, budget and potentially... Maybe something a little more expensive, but uh, I'm trying to avoid the more expensive. Sean Kemp is a great option. Um, his Carl Malone card isn't bad, but I think I'd rather have him at the pink diamond level. I, I'm going to say pink diamond Carl Malone. A lot of people complain because of who he is as a person. We don't look at that here. We're just playing a game. So he's going to show up actually in the center tier, I believe. So he's a great card to have on a budget. So is a uh, cat. Cat's another great card. My only complaint about Cat is that he's got a slow release. Carl Malone could do it all. So I would round out with probably Carl Malone and Cat. Um, those those are two really great cards. And, and Pink Diamonds at that. Hard to argue when you're looking at diamonds or pink diamonds that are that cheap and new. Sean Kemp's another one. Like I say, I keep coming back to him. I, I do really well with Sean Kemp. Um, and some of it's just the animations and the way they feel. Um... Another budget would be Andre Karolenko. He's come down in price a little bit. Um, I'm just kind of perusing through. And then we'll also check and check out some of these prices of some of these cards, kind of see where they're at. Um, some of these cards are very cheap. Some are perhaps not as cheap as we would like. But they're all going to be obtainable if you're just starting in. Uh, J.R. Smith, this diamond J.R. Smith, is identical to his uh, Pink Diamond Rewards from Season uh, was season 2. Uh, fantastic card, a Hall of Fame range. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, this Jeff Petrie isn't bad. Um, yeah, some of these other cards are just a little bit dated, and I just wouldn't wouldn't necessarily go with them, so that's why we start looking at more of the pink diamonds. And really, it comes down to how much do you really have to spend. Some guys feel like, you know, more than 5000 is too much. Some are okay with spending 10000 I would say, you know, kind of play it by ear. Oh, right here. Uh, Malik Seeley, I'd be very mistaken to not mention him. Um, he's he's really Kawhi level. I know some people may disagree with that. He's Kawhi level really in his offense and defense. Very similar. Great length. He's six foot eight. He's got a huge wingspan. He's got all of the badges that you need. Um, look at that. Hall of Fame chase down artist clamps. Intimidator Pogo. He can do contact finisher, fancy footwork, fast break, showtime, downhill, quick first step. Unpluckable, Tyler Shooter, Volume Shooter. Just really a fantastic card. Um, that's another one that I wouldn't hesitate to put into my lineup. Um, I'd put him at the three. He'd probably be my starter at the three or the two. Um, just have some size in there. Um, if you wanted, like I say, some more bigs, um, you could definitely definitely look into, uh, you know, who's another great budget center? We had talked about Carl Malone. Um Cat. Cat was probably the other budget center that I would consider at this point um, who's really going to get things done for you. So I go down the, the diamond tier. There's nothing that stands out at me. Um, I might be missing out on some Amethyst along the way. Amethyst Shack is great, but he's not cheap. He's uh, he's cost a little more than, than I would care to spend um, for him, to be honest. He, he's a great card for rebounding and, and being tough on the inside, but if you need a card that can do it all, I would really strongly consider Carl Anthony Towns. Um, he's he's not going to be breaking the bank. He might be a top flight card for you. He might be the card that you, you go after. And I go for this version here. This version here is going to be a little bit cheaper than the rest. Um, just, you know, just like I say, some thoughts and considerations in terms of lineups. Um, let me go ahead and take a look at prices on some of these cards for you, as well as some free cards. So if going down the line, I would strongly consider doing the collections for, um, bear with me here, I would do these collections for some of these hero cards. Um, Gilbert Arenas should be pretty safe and easy to do. You're just going to do some unlimited, some TTO on and offline. Um, same thing with Ray Allen. Well, Ray Allen's got a little more than that. Ray Allen has some pretty specific um, details that you need to accomplish. 
but he is quite good as well. Manu, Manu is free. Uh, we got Gervin is free. Um, who else is free? Pat Bev. Pat Bev is similar to um, what you had to do with Gilbert Arenas here to obtain. You're going to do some triple threat off and online. You're going to do some um, unlimited gameplay. You're basically just getting in and getting out. You're getting in and getting the games done getting credit for them. Same thing with Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell is an opal. Fantastic. Huge wingspan. I want to say he's like a 6'10 wingspan. He's only 6'1". He might be better at the 2 than the 1. This is a fantastic card. And he's free. You can probably get him in, in under an hour. Uh, some guy was saying he could do it in 20-30 minutes. You can probably get him in under an hour. Uh, another fantastic free card. Colin Sexton. We just talked about him. Uh, Jared Allen I haven't tried yet. But he's free. And he's going to be better than nothing. He's an amethyst. And he's got plenty of badges. Plenty of size. Um, I, w I, w I gotta say... I can't say too much about this card. He's a defender. I haven't used him. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, he's a great card offensively. Has good size. He can hold his own defensively. Um, but offensively, he is very elite, in my opinion. And again, a lot of these things are subjective. There's a card that I may think that is fantastic that you may use and go, hey, that card's not for me, and that's okay. Uh, this card here can do a little bit of everything. Go inside and outside. He can defend. He's got Hall of Fame Diner. You could put him at the 1 or the 2. I like him at the 1 just because he could have the ball in his hands. I would not have him guard the primary ball handler. I would switch up the matchups. But, you know, hard to argue with a, a free pink diamond. Other cards to consider, and you'll see them in the spotlight challenges. Uh, these are a little trickier to get because you got to have uh, a lot of requirements met just to go and play the game. So if I come in here, for example, the first game here to try to get Ilgaskus. Zydrinus Ilgaskis, great center in Cavs history. People don't know a lot about him because all you hear about is LeBron. Played a little bit with LeBron, and he was a great center. Uh, he must use three Hawks players, so that's not too bad to get started, right? Not not bad. Well, you come over here right now. I'm working on Nate Robinson. Uh, you come over here to about the third game. You now you need five players, so five Maverick players, okay? Not too bad. This one here. I'm going to have to play this one again. I, I did not do well the first couple times I played it. This one here is Hall of Fame, and everyone's been complaining. I didn't know what the big deal was, but you've got to have 10 Pelican players. I don't know why it's so difficult for me, but it has been. All the rest have been super easy, even on Hall of Fame. But for some reason, due to the Pelican set, it's been a little tougher, and I have all the great Pelican cards. So just something to consider, but you can get some really fantastic cards here. Um, some of them that I went after already, I went after Joe Dumars, great defender. I went after Allen Iverson. I mean, it's AI. Who doesn't like Allen Iverson? I love Allen Iverson. I also love his cards on 2K. I think they are fantastic. Would I use them in comp play? Probably not, but he is a lot of fun to use. Other cards that are worth redeeming and looking at, Latrell Sprewell is a top card. I would also consider um, Julius Irving the same as the Pink Diamond Rewards. Julius Irving, he's also a fantastic card. Um, next up, I would say this this Wix looks good on paper. I don't know if he really is. He has a great wingspan. Uh, Debusher is going to be an excellent defender. But if you get these first uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, and these two 90s out of the way, you will get a uh, Galaxy Opal Wes Unseld. And he is just a fantastic card. He's got a Kobe base, Kobe release. He's only 6'7", but he's got a wide player model. He's very strong. He's very fast. Some consider him to be one of the best centers in the game, if not the best center in the game. If you do the rest of these spotlights, this 90 and all the 2000s and these 2010s, um, by the way, these two cards are identical to their glitch counterparts, except they don't play defense, so they're not glitched. But offensively, they are very close to the two glitch counterparts, and they're free. Uh, Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard's going to play great defense, and he's free. You accomplish that, you'll get Brandon Roy. Brandon Roy is uh, very similar to uh, Galaxy Opal T-Mac. Um, I've done some gameplay on another friend's accounts. I haven't uploaded the video yet, but he is fantastic. Arguably better than T-Mac is Brandon Roy. You're missing out if you don't go and grind for these cards. Last but not least is going to be John Wall. John Wall arguably is the best point guard in the game, depending on your play style, depending on what you like with his release. I would consider him to be on par, if not better, than the uh, Dark Matter Derrick Rose that just came out. I have Derrick Rose, love the card, but I wish I had John Wall as well. John Wall is fantastic. Those are your bread and butter cards you want to go after if you're new to my team. The problem, only problem with these is you have to also collect other cards. You might have to just go get a bunch of 
uh, bronzes and silvers in order to fill out your teams. Make sure you get some of these other budget top tier cards that I mentioned so that way you could have a chance at winning the first time through. Uh, next up you have some weekly challenges here that actually give you some Evo cards. This here is Aaron Baines. Aaron Baines I have not tried yet in gameplays that I've seen of him. He seems to be quality very tough on the inside. Next up would be uh, Jose Calderon. I do not know anything about this card. I know he's an Evo, but he's free, and it would be hard to argue with redeeming him for just playing one game. Also, play these other games here to get some packs, get some odds for you. You never know. You might pull an Opal. You might pull a Pink Diamond, but you you know, either way, it's something. It's empty. It's free. Free packs. Free packs. Singer Challenge. Singer Challenge will get you some type of Hall of Fame badge. Um, this one here... Uh, looks like it was a diamond Jordan shoe and Hall of Fame badge. Um, you never know what you can get. You get something really great, like Hall of Fame uh, range or Intimidator, or if you're on next gen, you know Circus Threes or or whatever the case may be. Maybe you'll get that uh, possibility to get a top end um, Hall of Fame card and a badge, and you could apply it to a card and then flip it. There's some cards that will go for up to hundred thousand more just for having a couple key badges, whether it's Hall of Fame Range or Hall of Fame um, Intimidator, Hall of Fame Clamps. Those are all top tier and desirable um, Hall of Fame uh, badges. What else could I tell you all? Triple Threat. I'm a big fan of Triple Threat if you're starting out. Triple Threat will get you a lot of MT. I would start in there and make sure that you go through, get your tokens, get your MT, build up your squad. This is a great way to build up your squad. Look at the prizes that you can get out of the vault. It's not a bad deal, and you might get lucky and get an Opal like Kermit Washington with you're starting out. Hey, that's going to be at the top of your your uh, your uh, roster. He's going to be probably your go-to card. Um, you also have an opportunity to get a uh, diamond consumable, which could be a diamond contract or a diamond shoe. I personally, early on, would sell that for the MT in the auction house. Speaking of tokens, the token market. I would go and leverage the token market to get cards. You have to start off down here, but you get these cards. They can help fill out your roster. As you move up through the tiers, there are some quality budget ballers in here. I've redeemed probably most of the quality budget ballers, but if you go through here, the big thing is look for whoever is newest. For example, if I come to the diamond tier, I'm going to be looking for Karan Butler or Devin Booker, potentially Cedric Sabalos or Jim Jackson. The rest are pretty dated. If I come here into Pink Diamond tier, you see I've already redeemed them. Um, but out of the Pink Diamond tier, um, and again, if you're if you're getting that far up, you're probably um, you're probably doing a lot better and got a, a bigger a bigger uh, roster than than anything, and it's probably not worth talking about. But I want to talk about it anyway. Some of those cards, if I could find them here in my list, would be fantastic. Um, here we go. Um, Marcus Luca, Maurice Lucas isn't bad. Um, he's a little bit dated. Bobby Jones, a fantastic defender. Um, I would say Kiki Vandeweghe and, and Bobby Jones, probably two of your your top to get out of that tier. Um, JoJo White held up for a long time, but not anymore. Um, Galaxy Opal tier, obviously the one to get is Moses Malone. If you need a point guard, I would go after... Um, Gary Payton, but there's other options at the point, and I would save my tokens. Uh, we said we we're going to talk about uh, the auction house and to kind of see prices on things, so let's look up Smoosh Parker real fast. Just kind of give you an idea. This is on Xbox, by the way, so even his Amethyst, we can kind of take a look and see what he's run as an Amethyst. I personally just buy his Ruby and save my MT and Evo him. You can Evo him probably in one or two games pretty quick. Let's take a look here. He's running, yeah, he's running about 4,000 MT. Come down here to the Ruby. The Ruby's probably going to be closer to 2,000, I imagine. There you go. About 2,000 MT will get you a Ruby Smoosh Parker that you can Evo pretty handily. So it's up to you. I personally would save my MT, just play a quick game of probably Rookie Domination uh, to get myself where I needed to be with him and to get things right. Um was another card that we had mentioned. We had mentioned uh, Ronald Murray. He was an Amethyst. I don't believe that he cost too much. Oh, he's he's really cheap too. I actually thought he was more than that. 
look at this here. He's down to 2100, 2000. Is he under 2000? He just might be. For an amethyst, is he under 2000 as an amethyst? Nope. But he's right at 2000 MT. Hard to argue with that. Who else do we have in our list as we're going through here? In our no money spent account here. Uh, we'll look up Westbrook and Kevin Porter Jr. next and Seku and see where they're at. But this Westbrook is actually going to blow your mind. He was actually under 5K just a minute ago. And remember, he's a diamond for this amount. Just a fantastic card for so cheap. Clay is going to run a bit more. I think Clay was running closer to 15 or 16 last I checked. See here? Yep, he's 7,000. Let's come down here. I want to say right around 5,000 will get you Westbrook. Yeah, right around 5,000 will get you Westbrook. Um, We said Seku was next. So we we're going to look up price on. Let's see what he's running at. Seku might be... Cat might be out of the bag. No, he's still relatively cheap. He's running in the sevens or the sixes, maybe. Probably around 6,600, I'd imagine. 6,000. So, again, that's a really cheap option. Fantastic card. Hard to argue with that. Um, let's take a look at Rudy Fernandez. What's he going to run about 20,000 MT maybe? Nope, he's cheaper than that. What a great value on this card. Fantastic value. Scroll down here. There you go, 59.50. That's just fantastic value. Others that we had in our list here of our no money spent that we we're going to check prices on. Let's check on Dino and... Cat and Carl Malone. Let's check on Dino here since I made such a fuss about him. I believe that he is extremely cheap right now. Dino Raja. Dino Raja is going to run hopefully under eight grand, maybe seven. No, he's running right around 9,000, which isn't too bad for an elite big that could do it all. Anyways, folks, that's just something to give you kind of an idea of what's out there and what you can, can go for. Sorry for the video being a little long. I like to go into a lot of detail. If you want to check prices on these other cards, feel free. Um, I know Carl Anthony Towns in about 30K, so he is a little bit steep. Out of all these cards, the rest are going to be very reasonable, even Malik Seeley. I want to check on Seeley and Clay real fast. Let's do that before we sign off. Um, Malik Seeley. Just because I'm kind of curious myself. I'm not getting rid of my Malik Seeley just yet. He's actually serving quite a bit of purpose, being a budget baller. And he's not quite as budget as I thought he was going to be. Still sitting in that upper 20s. I would seen him come down into the lower and mid-20s uh, around the time that he first came out. Now that the packs have dried up for him, he settled in right in that 27, 28K range. But still, huge card. It plays better than some of the 200, 300, 400,000 MT cards. Um, same thing with Cat and Dino. They play at a level above what they should. We'll check on Clay here and Kevin Porter Jr., so Clay, I believe, was sitting about 16,000 MT. Not somebody you're going to buy right off the bat, obviously, but it is somebody that you could build up to rather quickly. Let's take a look here and see where he's at on the price. He's gone down a little bit as more packs have been opened. I would imagine as packs dry up and new cards come out that he still will hold some value due to his elite defense, but that's, it's hard to argue with that for him. Uh, let's look at Kevin Porter Jr. He is a ruby. Kind of expensive for a ruby, but 
I won't argue with the results from him. He is quite good. Around 5,000 MT it looks like. Maybe 6,000 MT. You can pick up Kevin Porter Jr. Hard to argue with that. It's great value. Um, I would recommend any of these cards to get you going. Um, let's take a look at coaching. I like to run Mike Malone or Mike D'Antoni. But initially when you're starting off, any coach will really do. Um, I would look for a pace and space. That's going to give you a little bit of everything. Maybe someone like a Clifford. Another one that's mentioned is Frank Vogel as a perimeter-centric style coach. But it comes down to your play style and whatever you want to do. Anyways, those are some quick tips as far as what cards to buy, what modes to grind, what to look out for, what not to look out for. Also, don't buy on pack day opening cards that are in packs unless they are super cheap rubies. The price are going to go down. Just trust me on that. In fact, it's a good time to try to snipe uh, previous pack opened cards that may have fallen out of popularity or that people are trying to sell to get MT to buy the new whiz bang thing anyways this is caveman here signing off with you thank you for watching another episode take